uh, in this video we're going to be covering a VPC uh, cost uh, even if you're using the free tier uh, uh, if you are getting started with the free tier uh, like uh, it's essential to have a grasp uh, on, on the VPC cost uh, as you know that many of the services they are offered for free within the free tier uh, but certain VPC related activities can still incur charges if uh, you don't manage them correctly so looking at here I have been using uh, in, on the for this account I have been using the S3 Lambda RDS uh, but the thing is that uh, the only charge I have been getting is VPC related and I'm gonna go into that uh, sure so uh, once the charges are here if we want to go here billing and cost management you would see that the only cost I had for this month was there was a little bit of cost for <coughs> A little bit of cost for the S3 but mostly it is uh, for the the VPC uh, yep and that is this much and yep so if we go to free tier you would see that I have not exceeded or not going to exceed anything <coughs> which is allowed so basically the AWS is within the range sorry uh, the RDS service uh, is within the range the RDS uh, data, like the running the data, uh, database instance is gonna be within the range <clears throat> data transfer for the AWS data transfer again you need to understand that when it comes to the data transfer the terminology is used for many things right now uh, AWS free usage so that AWS transfer is free but it depends if you are <coughs> if you are trying to access different services and do the data transfer from there uh, so this is the global data transfer out bytes okay so the other other ones the S3 requests the uh, those are within the range so every uh, every service I have that would show you that we you are within the range but still I'm getting uh, charges uh, on the free tier so if I go back to home actually let's open another one and I wanted to go to VPC just to show you that I have not added anything uh, and the VPC okay so the VPC came with this US East one only one VPC is there that's the the one then we have the subnets I have again these are the default values uh, the subnets I've got three subnets one two and then three uh, So you can see I got I've got uh, three subnets uh, and everything in here whether I'm using it or not is in US East uh, I have the internet gateway again this is just the default setup I have not added any NAT gateways stuff like that uh, but still I'm getting the charges okay so just so that I can explain you like uh, so there are various cost components associated with the AWS VPC they are uh, data transfer costs then we have this NAT gateway cost then we have a VPN cost in case you are using it and then we have the uh, VPC endpoints so if you have created endpoints I'm not sure if you are if you're allowed to have one endpoint in here but uh, in the in the free tier but if you are using more than what is allowed in the uh, endpoints you're gonna end up uh, paying for that too again the reason I have been getting it is because of the data transfer uh, I did not use the I so saw my RDS instance is not 
is basically using uh, username password in order to be accessed and it's kind of publicly available uh, and it's not part of the VPC so and accessing different resources without the VPC is gonna uh, cost you uh, money again if you try to make it part of the VPC and then your lambda which is trying to access that uh, RDS instance and they are they belong to the same VPC and again you are allowed to have one default VPC without any cost I would have been good so far but when my lambda wants to access the internet I need NAT gateways and setting that up is gonna start uh, like you're gonna start getting uh, you, you, they're gonna incur uh, cost uh, for that reason that you start using the, the NAT gateways uh, <clears throat> okay so again as I said uh, there are common factors that contribute to high VPC costs they are like if you are using suboptimal uh, network architecture you're like you're using bunch of unnecessary VPCs stuff like that if you are using too much of NAT gate uh, gateways uh, it's gonna it's gonna uh, give you high VPC costs then if you are doing an inefficient data transfer patterns so again I have videos which are being downloaded from the S3 as public videos stuff like that so if you are not careful about how uh, you can effectively like depending on your business needs uh, do the data transfers if you are not careful about that you will be getting high cost uh, related to the VPCs uh, I do get this warning here it says you have exceeded 85% of the free tier usage limit for one service and if I go to the details as I said uh, this is that limit I guess but again it's just gonna 20 GB per month for free for 12 months uh, this is the global RDS storage usage so in the forecasted it's still below what I uh, what what is like freely available for uh, to me within this free tier okay so in terms of the some some uh, tips and strategies to optimize the VPC cost so you need to right size your resources meaning like adjusting instance types if you're using the EC2 instances uh, if you are like uh, like you need to right size your NAT gateways and if you have the VPN connections uh, uh, like you need to uh, based on your actual usage you need to uh, figure that out then uh, <clears throat> you need to uh, the VPC connections you do uh, you need to make sure that like your resources belong to a VPC uh, if they uh, like they are not like publicly available so basically you're not getting out of the VPC because there are different costs uh, associated to it so let's say if you have an RDS instance uh, uh, you are gonna Let's go to our RDS instance here. So basically the RDS instance, I have the MySQL RDS instance and in order to access that uh, like I am getting out of the VPC every single time because it's not linked to a VPC so that is gonna be uh, like the the numbers the cost for that is uh, very different okay I think <clears throat> for in my case it is still part of the VPC but it is still part of the VPC but it is still like I have made it ex uh, uh, like I have said it so that it it is accessible on like publicly too. like any any service can reach out to my DB uh, this one even if it is part of the RDS uh, VPC and then 
uh, still accessible publicly. So that is also uh, that's where, uh, that's what's happening in my case. Still, the data is going out of the VPC, and because right now uh, you cannot create a database instance, an RDS instance, without uh, associating it to any default or any VPC. So they are not gonna let you. <coughs> uh, give me one second. So I don't think you're gonna, they're gonna ask you to remove, if you are trying to delete all the VPCs, you're gonna ask you to, if it is possible, I'm not 100% sure if it is possible to delete the default VPCs, but if, if, if it is, they're gonna ask you to remove all the resources associated with them, and then you can come here and give it a try. So, uh, <coughs> the other, um, like, uh, uh, best practice would be uh, you need to use the route your traffic directly to AWS services uh, without going through the internet. Thus, like you're gonna be minimizing the data transfer cost. If it is possible that you are not accessing the internet services in for anything, you can just use the VPC endpoints to do that. Uh, try to avoid, if you can, uh, not to go to internet. Uh, uh, like by actually having more VPC endpoints. Uh, then you also need to implement the traffic uh, filtering and, and basically you are setting up the, the, uh, the routing policies for that. Uh, so you can utilize the security groups, uh, network ACLs, uh, routing tables, uh, routing tables like these ones. Uh, stuff like that uh, to basically filter out uh, the traffic uh, just make sure allow as much as you the business needs uh, that and the the last one the best practice I would say is definitely keep an eye uh, on monitoring and optimizing if you are using the data dog uh, set some triggers for uh, how um, how much cost uh like you have incurred and then uh keep an eye on the monthly cost uh for the vpc that is yeah okay so again it does not i tried to look into it but it does not really go into a lot more details about it but if, if you go here uh it doesn't go into more details about what, how exactly uh, like you had this cost. So it just tells you that, okay, the cost is related to the VPC, but doesn't say anything more than that. Cost categories. Yeah, I tried uh, looking for that, but that is the only information you're gonna be getting that you can actually have. So the VPC is taking that cost, but it won't tell you that if it is uh, for a specific reason or um, it's gonna be like, it's not gonna pinpoint it. Okay, you uh, transfer uh, data out of the VPC and that's why uh, you're getting this much uh, bill. So, yeah. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, thanks for watching.